Paul and Timothy, servants of Christ Jesus, to all the saints in Christ Jesus who are at Philippi, with the overseers and deacons, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Hey, welcome. It's Rick here at Kingship.Church, kicking off our first digital devotional series online. We're so excited to get started with Rejoice in Philippians. As we take a look at the book of Philippians, a couple verses a week, we're just going to take a few small steps into Philippians today with verses 1 and 2 and cannot wait to get started. Well, if you're like me, when you start a book, you're less likely to ever go and dive super deep into the copyright. Huh. I had no idea this was based out of Chicago. I don't know how much I would have thought we would have gotten out of, hi, my name's Paul, and here's, I'm writing this to this group of people. But as Paul starts his letter to the church of Philippi, he places an identity statement on him and Timothy. And he states that they are servants of Jesus Christ. Now your translation might have bond servants or slaves, but regardless, servants of Jesus Christ wasn't just any statement that we say as this, I am a follower of Jesus. No, actually, this statement says more about Jesus than it does actually Paul and Timothy or even us. See, in the Old Testament, you'd find prophets and others actually being identified with this similar marker where they would be stated as servant of the Lord. Moses refers referred to as the servant of Jehovah. Or like in Judges 2.8, we have Joshua, son of Nun, but a servant of the Lord. So it's no coincidence that Paul said servant of Jesus Christ. He's actually making a claim that Jesus Christ is Lord. That he's not a new God on the market, but he is the same God of the Old Testament. And people familiar with the Old Testament would have been quick to pick up on what he was actually saying. This has huge ramifications. He's saying that the God that we have known has come in the flesh as Jesus Christ. And notice how in verse two, he's already connecting the Trinity by saying that the grace comes from God our Father and Jesus Christ, and he's combining them together. So when we say that we are servants of Jesus, do we realize that that has more weight on who Christ is than it actually is on us? When we attach ourselves to Jesus, we're actually making bolder statements about him than we are about ourselves. Because anything of worth that we are, our promises, our integrity, our love, and the way that we treat other people, all points back to the one that we are claiming to be servants of. And so this Jesus isn't just a guy filling in with the next new idea. We are saying that Jesus Christ is the one true God. And that is something to celebrate. As we've started this church kingship, there have been so many different avenues that we've thought about taking, like what would be the first thing that we work on? But the more and more that we realized that the first grounding of anything that ever needed to be for us, it was that who is Jesus Christ and how have we come to believe that he is the Lord? Paul then goes on to address his audience the saints of Philippi. Now, when you hear the word saints and the first thing that you think of are the hard workers, the holy of holy that are going out and serving the poor, the, the ones that have been set apart and set aside, the ones that are really identified as there can't be possibly any doubt that these are the true believers, then I think we've misunderstood some of what the word saint really means. We got some of it right. The first thing was is, yes, it is to be holy, or yes, it is to be set apart. But that is also you and me. See, the problem is, is our mind tends to think of a saint as someone who does something rather than something that God has done to them. James McGovery Boyce puts it like this, to be a saint is to be set apart by God. Not by what we've done, not by who we are, but by who he is. Paul is addressing a true issue here. Paul is saying, I am a servant to identify with a king, a Lord, Jesus Christ. And he, in return, makes me something that I cannot make on my own. Of all the work that the apostles or any good worker would have done, none of it 
would have been able to measure up to the righteousness and holiness of God. See, we can't claim the status of saint on our own. It is something that's gifted to us by the grace of Jesus Christ. Not by what we have done, but what Jesus has done. So how do you identify? Because in a world today, when so much of our time is spent trying to figure out who we are, how do we fit in, how do I identify in this world around me? Are we quick to work hard to find our own labels? To make a bold statement to say, this is me? Or can we spend our time recognizing that it is actually God who already identifies who we are and that frees us to spend our lives declaring who He is? Honestly, we spend too much time trying to figure out who we are and we're always trying to figure it out for the wrong people. Christ alone has the authority to make us into something that we cannot on our own. And because of that grace that He gives us, we can be called saints. Thank you.